Hello guys, how are you? On this episode of the Ochre Albatross, I take measurements, send masts, send more masts using a machine, I do the bowsprit rigging, draw some weird hieroglyphs, appear to be extremely confused and do some rat lines. And again, hello guys, how are you? Uh, on this episode, episode 9 of the Ochre Company Albatross, beautiful kit. I build the foremast and the main mast. I build some horizontal masts also. I start to do the rigging, the bowsprit rigging, and the rat lines. What a fantastic build this is. Um, it's a journey, it's a discovery. Let's call it. Um, each page that you just open and follow in order to build this one, this kit, is a new challenge and I really like that. Um, with the proper tools you can do wonders without even having experience because on this one, for you, for those of you who are here the first time uh, watching this, I have no experience whatsoever on building these kinds of wood ship kits and I am loving it. As I told you this is episode 9 I tried to film everything the best way I could so if now and then my naughty hand gets in the way I am sorry for that guys and saying naughty hand sounded very weird. Uh, as always I hope you enjoy this video I hope you are safe and if you are here for the first time welcome. And here carving uh, this tip of the horizontal mast. Be gentle, okay? This wood is very soft and you have to use the tip of the blade and be very, very, very gentle. Be patient. And as you can see, this plan one-to-one -one scale, this map, uh, this schematic is priceless. Um, it's very good. You can apply immediately uh, the measurements on the wood piece that you want. And you can get the job done relatively fast and knowing that it's going to be at the correct measurement.
And as you can see, I'm always saying this and it's true. Dry fit, dry fit, dry fit. As a matter of fact, I'm saying this so many times that I put it on a mug. And <laughs> that's where I drink my coffee every morning right now. So uh, yeah, dry fit always first, guys. At this stage, um, two things. One, the holes I did are not through and through, okay? Be careful. And second, try to maintain these um, metal pieces parallel to each other, okay? You don't want one bending to the right, other to the left. Um, try to maintain them parallel. And again, guys, um, for most of you who are here for the first time, I'm, I have no experience on this, of course. I'm a modeler, it's my hobby. But these kind of kits, wood chip kits, I don't have any experience. This is my first. For those of you seeing this on Ochre channel, please be gentle with me. <laughs> I'm no naval engineer. I am no professional modeler. I'm just an amateur here building what I want, what I like and what I think also that you like and if you are here on my YouTube channel for the first time welcome consider subscribing and I hope you enjoy this video here on the masts I am tinting the masts I am using this uh, Sapelli uh, ink from ochre and it's acrylic it's water okay water based one thing please um, I learned this with uh, as I'm going when you don't tint the masts for the first time and you use super glue super glue creates a glass surface and if you do um, some gluing first then you are applying the ink on second place on top of that uh, surface and it doesn't going to adhere to the surface okay it's going to be, uh, there's going to be a white spot there it's acrylic it's not fault of the ink the super glue creates a surface a very smooth surface equivalent when you use some uh, clear gloss coat so my opinion I don't know if I'm saying some sacrilege here my opinion paint the wood first Doing these blocks and these pulleys, man, these these are so small. I don't know how some of you guys can do this with your eyes closed because kudos. This is very small. There are very small pieces and sometimes it takes time for you to create some muscle memory, you know, building them. So, for those of you who do this, kudos.
I think the next time I build a wood chip, these metal parts, I will tint them uh, like modelers, armor modelers do on the metal caterpillars with that blue liquid. I don't know, uh, just thinking. Maybe I'll do that because a um, uh, rusty, weathered metal piece looks much, much better uh, than uh, all this goldish yellow. After you carve that um, little indentation here on the mast, you sand it carefully just in order to be very um, circular and smooth. And now the masts, the main mast and the foremast. <clears throat> in order to make up uh, the masts, the first step is to cut the rods to size, okay? Um, or by taking measurements on directly on the plan 2 which I told you about is priceless which is printed in one to one scale all of the masts and yards have a certain conical shape to them so be careful when you are sanding them to shape just sand a bit more on the top and let uh, it be a little, a little less on the base And this piece now that I don't know the name, but if you can help me in the comment section, I would be uh, I would appreciate it. it. Has to be um, in, in has to go to a certain measurement because there's other mass that's going to be inserted on it. So stop sanding the main mast, test fit, dry fit the piece until the one to one plan says it's all on the correct uh, depth on the mast.
and the masts have to be varnished okay guys to protect all your work uh, some of the pieces have to be painted as you saw in black and then you start um, building the slings the blocks the eyeballs the clump blocks I think it's called clump box and you attach them to um, the masts in order to do the running uh, rigging okay it's there on these small pieces that all the ropes are going to go through and thus giving the realistic appearance on the rigging of the ship And I wanted to take this opportunity to thank each one of you, to thank Ochre, first of all, for sending me this uh, kit. It's a pleasure to build it. And to every single one of you, subscriber, supporter, um, thank you very much. My channel has um, some years now and I never thought I would um, be here at this stage. So it's thanks to all of you and I am truly grateful so thank you very much and as you can see this is the bowsprit rigging um, it's it's very relaxing to do this everything fits um, it, it, it gives a bit more beauty to the bow of the ship of the albatross and as you work progresses you feel relaxed everything is going okay the kit helps uh, the instructions are not the best but not complicated are easy to, 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 to follow to go through and the kit just grows and this for me this part which I was afraid of it's relaxing um, the same applies to the rigging to the red lines um, and the dead eyes. I, I was afraid of the holes where to put the rope um, and I got one or two not very aligned but even so for an amateur doing this for the first time practicing for HMS victory when the time comes and in the process to be able to look at this kit finished no problem at all And as you can see, dry fit, dry fit, dry fit. Always dry fit first and make sure that the masts are well aligned, everything is going to fit, everything is according to the instructions. Make sure because one step here is going to matter um, on the next stage.
and a lot of you ask me how my bench is this is how it looks like um, and I thought on this one I should use uh, Leonard Peterson's uh, book I have both in digital form this one I printed it in order to consult faster okay it's not a pirated copy it's mine I have uh, the hardcover version and I am studying uh, the rigging here on this book I can do it and uh, watch it better and it's uh, um, something that helps along with the instructions now on this guys first um, I am a terrible draw I don't know how to draw th three lines four lines but I thought that I should do this to help myself and to help um, you the viewer to realize what I am going to do next on a smaller scale And here as I'm going, uh, the main and mizzen uh, shrouds, I think they call it shrouds, correct me if I'm wrong and I'm sorry if I'm wrong. Um, each one, each one is being better and better. And this is what practice makes, right? Uh, despite the fact that, well, I, I still don't know because all the um, ropes, the shrouds, had the same the exact same uh, length but uh, I got one or two a bit bigger than the other but I can live with that no problem at all um, the ship looks beautiful in the end with the ropes with the shrouds and I am pleased with the work I do here because I'm working with um, close-ups sometimes you may uh, think or have the opinion that my work is very blunt uh, you can see everything but well when I look a few centimeters just back it looks okay it's not supposed to be uh, perfect it's a 1 to 100 scale so I'm very pleased with it
and believe it or not, this for me was truly relaxing. Something that I was, a very dramatic word, but afraid of, turns out to be a very pleasant step to do. And it, well, a certain stage, I know that I use modeling with a smile as a logo, and I truly believe that, but you cannot see it, but in the middle of this build, I was truly smiling because um, I, it wasn't, I had no reason whatsoever to be afraid of this step. If things are done properly um, and improvising a bit, it's simple, no big deal. For those of you who are a bit afraid and scared uh, of this step, the rigging, try it. You will see that it's very, very, very rewarding.
and I'm sorry I spent so much time on this step here and showing you. Uh, I don't want to be monotonous on this build, but so many people commented that uh, if possible they wanted to see uh, how it's done. I mean, it's not professional work, it's not, but it's, yeah, it, it gave me great pleasure to work on this step and it's done, it's correct the way I do it. Um, so I hope you guys appreciate this and for now it's how I am working on it and it's as it is. Uh, the red lines are done. So I think I'm finishing this video for now with 30 minutes, half an hour. I think it's, yeah, I think it's pretty good. Uh, so guys, I hope you are safe. Keep safe, okay? And as always, keep modeling, guys. Keep modeling. Always, always with a smile. Cheers.